Two Israeli civilian workers were killed in a terrorist infiltration at the Nachalos terminal located east of the Gaza Strip Wednesday afternoon. According to initial reports, four terrorists infiltrated the crossing, which acts as a transit terminal restricted for the imports of liquid fuel and is also an Israeli storage site for petrol and gas. The terrorists opened fire at the Israeli workers, killing two before fleeing. The four terrorists who were involved in the infiltration attempted to flee back towards Gaza. Two were killed by an IDF tank who identified them near the security fence, and the Air Force fired a missile at a car used by the two other terrorists, killing one and wounding another. The Islamic Jihad, Hamas, and the Popular Resistance Committee claim responsibility. The army said the terrorists had planned to kidnap Israeli civilians or soldiers at the terminal. Shortly after, the Air Force launched a series of airstrikes in northern Gaza, killing at least three Palestinians. IDF forces pulled out of Kisafim in central Gaza Wednesday after Staff Sergeant Saif Pisan, 21, was killed and two other soldiers wounded during gun battles with Islamic Jihad and Hamas gunmen. Both terror organizations were quick to claim responsibility filming the site where the soldier was killed, showing his blood-stained camouflage helmet cover. Islamic Jihad spokesman Khalid al Bach blamed Israel, claiming its refusal to reach a Tardia was the cause of the conflict. <laughs> The IDF incursion is one of a series of routine operations conducted by the army in an attempt to destroy the terror infrastructure. Meanwhile, the terrorists in Gaza prepare for the next confrontation with IDF troops. This is InfoLife TV headline news, April 9th. I'm Margot Dutkevich. An IDF soldier from an elite unit was killed and two others suffered light to moderate wounds Wednesday during clashes with Palestinian gunmen in the southern Gaza Strip. The soldier was identified as 21-year-old Staff Sergeant Saif Bisan from the village of Jat in the Upper Galilee. The soldiers, all from the Golani Brigade's elite Agoz unit, were operating to uncover terror infrastructure near the Kisufin crossing, once the main crossing into Gaza before Israel's 2005 unilateral withdrawal. As the soldiers searched the area, they came under gun and anti-tank missile fire from a well-planned ambush by Palestinian gunmen. Bissam was killed and the two others were lightly wounded and evacuated to Soroka Hospital in Beersheba. According to Palestinian reports, one Hamas operative was killed and at least four others wounded. The foreign ministry said Tuesday it will not allow the United Nations official appointed to investigate Israeli-Palestinian human rights to enter the country after he supported comments comparing Israel to Nazis. Richard Falk is scheduled to take up his post with the UN Human Rights Council in May, but the foreign ministry said it will deny Falk a visa to enter Israel, Gaza and the West Bank. Israeli security forces thwarted once again attempts by terrorists in Gaza to dig smuggling tunnels across into Israel. On Tuesday, a 3.5-meter tunnel dug inside a Palestinian house was uncovered during an IDF operation in the northern Gaza Strip. The tunnel was located approximately 700 meters from the Israeli kibbutz Kfar Aza. In recent weeks, the IDF has collected army-issued weapons held by Israelis living in the West Bank, as well as caches of weapons held in storage in the settlements. It has also stopped providing bulletproof windows for settlers' cars. Danny Dayan, head of the Council of Jewish Community, said the measures taken by the army harm the settlers' security. Syria has arrested a Saudi official in connection with the assassination of top Hezbollah commander Imad Munia, Iran's false news agency reported Tuesday. The agency quoted an Iranian source as saying a high-ranking defense official in Saudi Arabia's embassy in Damascus was arrested by Syrian security forces. 
For the eighth time within a year, Israel's national carrier, El Al Airlines, is raising ticket prices, this time by 8 to 9 percent. The increase is expected to go into effect after the Pesach holidays. That's all for InfoLive TV, Israel's only internet television website that broadcasts in four languages to the world.